Intellectual property and new business models are an integral part of creative entrepreneurship. Um, in fact, the creative industry's definition includes the concept of intellectual property within it. Now, there are many different definitions and of creative industries, but the one I'm referring to is goes back to one of the original ones from the UK, and it says the creative industries are those industries which have their origin in individual creativity, skill and talent, and which have the potential for wealth and job creation through the generation and exploitation of intellectual property. So there you see it, the term intellectual property is at the heart of the definition of creative industries. So we can't avoid it, it's there, and it's what the creative and cultural industries are built on. In fact, you know, there's another term called the copyright industries, which is a different way to describe uh, what we might also call the creative industries or cultural industries. There are lots of definitions and they're all, they all overlap each other and sometimes are used interchangeably. But we can't get away from the fact that intellectual property is, is at the heart of it all. And therefore, we need to know more about intellectual property. And I find that many uh, creative entrepreneurs don't know as much as they should uh, about intellectual property. Some are highly skilled, of course. Some use different techniques and registrations. Um, and then, you know, they can refer to specialist intellectual property lawyers. But I think we all need to get a grip on what we mean by intellectual property, but not just from an academic point of view, to understand how it fits into creative entrepreneurship, to the different business models, to new business models, to the way that we do business, to the way that we, um, we develop our mission, deliver our mission, and the way that we develop our organizations and enterprises. So just a very quick overview of intellectual property and what we mean by that, uh, although there's more detail in another video. I'd say that intellectual property is an umbrella term for you know, probably four main elements. The first of which is uh, copyright. And copyright is the most common and in many ways the simplest and most obvious. Um, and that relates to you know, pieces of written work, of literature, but it also applies to music, to computer code, uh, even to choreography. So as soon as we produce something, whether it's a work of art or whatever, um, that is our copyright. Secondly, we have a design right, which is similar, and this is the right of um, the owner to have intellectual property rights over uh, a design that they've created. And there are different regimes in different countries, but sometimes um, design right can be easily registered in a way that copyright might not easily be registered. The third one that we're familiar with is trademarks, um, which is, you know, broadly speaking, a brand, but it's a bit more technical than that. And trademarks can be registered for different product, products and services, different fields of uh, business, uh, and in different countries. So again, it becomes a bit more complicated, but we know what a trademark is, and we can use a trademark and register a trademark uh, to protect ourselves and to commercialize our enterprises in the creative sector. And then fourthly, the big one is uh, patents or patents, which are usually associated with inventions. Uh, I automatically think of gadgets of different ki kinds, whether it's a, a better lock or pen knife or something, but it, it can actually uh, apply to many other things. And it does differ around the world where some business processes can be patented in the United States in a way they can't in the UK or perhaps in Australia. So it does get a bit complicated, but we need to be aware of those four main elements of intellectual property that, um, you know, that we can use in different ways or in combination uh, within the business model of our creative enterprise, both for protection purposes and for commercialization. And that's a key point actually, because when I've delivered workshops or talked with individual creative businesses about copyright or trademarks, their first feeling is one of protection. You know, how can we protect our ideas? Although you can't technically protect an idea as such, it's this thing that you produce from the idea. 
which is a key point actually. Um, but yes, of course, first of all, we need to defend what we have. And so intellectual property rights are a great defense against other people stealing the things that we've created that we have copyright in, or design right, or um, a, a patent certainly, or a trademark if it's registered. So we can use it defensively. But what I find much more positive and exciting after we've done that is that we can use um, these intellectual property rights for to generate new income streams. You know, once we own it, we can stop other people using it or, and this is crucial, we can allow people to use our copyright or our trademark or our patent um, for their commercial purposes, but under our control. In other words, they, we can limit how they use our works um, or we can allow them and take a percentage of the proceeds. So it's not just about defending what we have and what we've created, but commercializing what we've created through licensing, of, uh, you know, deliberately and uh, in a calculated way, allowing other people to use uh, our works uh, for commercial purposes uh, or non-commercial purposes according to the control that we have. And within that commercialization is the opportunity for scalability. You know, this is an important element of any business model. Is it scalable? You know, can we actually ramp up production? Can we deliver to more than one customer at once? And many businesses are not scalable because of their nature. But many aspects of business or certain products can be scaled up. So, you know, a digital image can be distributed around the world. Software, once it's produced, you know, can be just replicated many, many, many times um, without the need for kind of mass production that you would get in, in a factory. Um, so certainly at the digital end of the creative industries, there's opportunities for scalability. But to do this in a way that works commercially, we have to be clear about what we can protect, what we allow, where the dividing line is between ownership and the consumer, and whether we actually want, um, maybe we do want, other people to take our work and to commercialize it, to distribute it and spread it for whatever purpose, commercial or otherwise. So this idea of scaling up, of uh, replication, is, is at the heart of many business models, and it's very closely tied to intellectual property rights. But, you know, we also have within the modern world, you know, what we call the sharing economy or the gift economy, where sometimes we might want to actually give away something for free. And we might do that for all kinds of purposes. It might be pure altruism that we've created something and we just want the world to enjoy it. And that's fine. Um, but it might be linked to reputation or to some kind of customer loyalty or some kind of a quid pro quo where at some point, perhaps in the future, we want to get something back or we are giving back for what we had in the past. So there might be a sort of very loose trade-off in a sense. And, you know, this can be part of a, a smart and clever business strategy where we deliberately give away some things, but in carefully controlled circumstances um, in order to make money elsewhere. So, you know, I'm talking now about the freemium business model, which is that combination of free and premium. And we've all seen it, of course, in the apps that we download to our smartphones, where we can get the free version, literally free of charge and use it, or we can upgrade to the pro version paying a few dollars and and sometimes within computer games we can pay we can upgrade further and further uh, to get different benefits or different uh, tools and uh, products within a computer game so you know this is a deliberate strategy to to give away for free the basic product to many many consumers who will never buy anything at all in order to bring in and sell more and more to the smaller percentage of people who, who do want to buy. 
and there's a, a very interesting book um, called The Curve, which is all about that, that particular business model. So intellectual property rights are, are present as we discuss all these things, the freemium business model, there's open source as well as the gift economy where, you know, again, we're familiar with open source uh, software projects where people from all over the world will contribute free of charge to a grand project for social good, you know, to make a better web browser, to make software that will save the world or whatever it might be, or just something that's a lot of fun and people will contribute to an open source platform and an open source product, usually associated with software of some kind. But it, you know, it, it can be for designs, uh, 3D printing, all kinds of things use an open source model, usually in a non-commercial way, but we have to be mindful nevertheless of intellectual property rights. And then we get on to um, the idea of Creative Commons licenses. This is very, really interesting because in terms of uh, intellectual property, creatives might want to simply give away the creation to the world and put it into the public domain. Or they might want to be highly protective of it and say, you know, don't mess with my creation. Don't sell it, don't copy it, don't think about even changing it. And that's the right of the creator to decide. But the creator might want to do things in between those two extremes where they might want to say, for example, well, you know, take my work and build on it and change it and have fun with it, but please make sure you give me a credit as the original creator. Or they might say you can share it within educational, you know, educational uh, establishments for educational purposes, um, but if it's for commercial use, you're not allowed to do that. So we have the intellectual property rights, and we can decide how loose or tight we want to be with them. And the beauty of the Creative Commons licenses is that you can choose one for whatever purpose you you want. The Creative Commons isn't telling you what to do. It's saying that if you want to have this particular option, like uh, non-commercial distribution, uh, but non-commercial only, then um, you can choose a particular license which explains that first of all in very simple layperson's language, and then in legal legalese, which is watertight for particular jurisdictions. And this is fun, you know, a fantastic opportunity, I think, for us to control our intellectual property rights in the exact way that we want to, which might include some loosening or allowing of people to use our works for particular purposes, uh, for particular reasons in, in different ways. So we should be aware of them. And then finally, just to share a couple of stories from my own experience, which pick up on a few of these things. So I wrote a book called T-Shirts and Suits, A Guide to the Business of Creativity. And along with the publisher, I decided after a few years that we should make that available as a free ebook in English. So it's available on my website, davidparish.com, and you can download it, the full ebook as a PDF. Um, it's free of charge. Now, why do I do that? For two reasons, actually, which are different but not contradictory. One is that I want my book to be available to creative entrepreneurs to help them to be smarter with the business. It's my gift to the world if that doesn't sound too grand. But at the same time it acts as my advertising. So I want people to distribute it because then they will see the book I've written, they will get to know about me and my work and that's why you know I got an invitation from Taiwan to to be flown out there at their expense business class to speak at a conference for which they paid me they translated my book and published it in traditional Chinese for Taiwan um, and paid me for the licensing fee for that. And then uh, I was also invited to deliver a workshop while I was there for which I was paid. So the, the generous act of giving away my book actually would, you know, paid me dividends in terms of premium pricing for my speeches, uh, my licensing and my workshops. So, you know, it wasn't as stupid as it first might sound to give a book away because it's part of a, a business model using intellectual property. And for the, that book, I use a Creative Commons license, which specifies, you know, very exactly 
that yes, you may copy this book. Yes, you may redistribute it. I want you to, but you must not change it. You mustn't mess with it. And finally, you shouldn't sell it unless you get me involved. If you want to give it away free as part of a conference or part of a training package or university course indeed, then you can do. But if you want to commercialize it, you're not allowed to do that. Let's talk, let's do a joint venture. So, you know, they're examples of how I've used these different models uh, around intellectual property in my own business. And there are others I can tell you about. But I think that gives you a pretty uh, good overview of intellectual property and new business models and how intellectual property in particular is an integral part of how we do business in the creative and cultural sector.